This self-awareness mechanism belongs to all men, and so it is found attached to the head of many of the figures. For example, we see here, and note the intake valve, the arm, the comb which, with some teeth missing, and more clearly now an eye, which looks downward towards the man. This downward-looking eye symbolizes that it is indeed the self-awareness mechanism of the brain which makes man aware of his own self. Even Quetzalcoatl, who some believe gave birth to the universe, possesses his own snake of self-awareness and this is indicated in this plate. Note that this case the person is aware of his own awareness as shown. Some may not believe as of yet that the Mayan manuscripts actually contain such deep knowledge of the universe. Examine the drawing. The sitting man is looking upward at the sky according to the position of his head, but his eyes are seen focused on his mind. He sees the object he is holding in his left hand, not with his eyes, but with the legendary third eye as clearly indicated in the middle of the forehead. This object, which is so far away that the third eye is required to perceive it, compresses to only one thing in the real world, a galaxy of the barred spiral type. Carefully examine the below pictures of galaxies that uh, we have in many photographs with the high power telescope. The first is a very spiral type. A spiral structure at the center is obscured in most photographs, but carefully exists uh, as indicated in the Mayan drawings. No galaxies of this type are visible by the naked eye and they only exist at extreme distances. Most galaxies are of the spiral type as shown in many photographs. These two galaxies are Andromeda and also our Milky Way. But Andromeda, Andromeda is the only external galaxy visible with the naked eye and appears as a blur without a telescope. It is known that this galaxy is also a nucleon and exists within one's own brain and all of matter. Examine this picture on the upper right and here is seen a person with a corn planting stick dropping pieces of corn into a vase. The corn represents the nucleons out of which everything is made. Careful examination of the vase shows that the nucleons are being fed into the man himself. These nucleons even make up the dog as can be seen by their re-emergence from his breath. No doubt the Mayan custom could be associated with this scene. The author believes, as previously indicated, that either the custom came after the drawing or the custom was used as a manner of explaining this. Most galaxies are of the spiral type, including our own Milky Way. In this plate, in the right is shown an occupant of the space-time machine holding a spiral galaxy instead of a nucleon in order to indicate their identity. Note that the galaxy is giving off vapors of energy due to its cyclic collapse. It is these vapors which sustain and are pleasing to the gods. In this other plate, in the right shows that the galaxies indeed make up the liquid stored within the bases. Refer also to this other plate in the left and this other plate upper right uh, that indicates the identity of a god enjoying the vapors of a nucleon and a native enjoying the vapors of a burning galaxy. The spiral galaxy may also be identified in other places in the manuscripts. Refer to this one here in the middle left and the, this other plate in the upper middle and this uh, plate in the lower center as well as this other one in the bottom center. Allow the author to now recount some details of Quetzalcoatl's visit to the Mayan people in that time long ago. In this plate, in the bottom, it's shown the state of the natives before Quetzalcoatl arrival. They wear animal heads and dance with spears and bones. In the middle picture, Quetzalcoatl has arrived in his space-time machine. He's shown presenting to the native knowledge corn, bananas, etc. 
In the top picture, as shown, the natives after Quetzalcoatl has left, they are now civilized and are seen grinding corn. Quetzalcoatl is credited in Central America legend with bringing civilization and being the originator of corn. In regard to the bananas, it may be significant that some botanists have concluded that they could not have evolved by natural means on the earth. In this plate also it depicts an encounter with the natives. Note that it's most of the drawings of note that it's most of the drawings of Quetzalcoatl, a demarcation line appears on his face. The author believes that this represents involved pigment separation and that the Mayan visitor is both tan and white. While visiting the Mayans, Quetzalcoatl decided to take one of the natives on a trip with him. They made use of the space-time machine in order to travel about paying visits to various civilizations. Refer to this plate. In the center, the two sit under a stylized form of machine. The Mayans of today consider this drawing as showing the route of the Heavenly Father. The journey begins at the bottom of the plates. Two persons each sit in their own machines. Note that two nucleons above one of the machines are shown with pot handles so as to clearly indicate the use of a liquid. In the center between the machine, the upward arrow indicates the breakthrough of the galactic barrier around the galaxy and the trip through space-time begins. The path taken is indicated by the dots in a clockwise direction. The scene at the left shows the two travelers examining the fantastically evolved brain of a tied-up animal. At the top, the travelers are examining the two peculiar galaxies. At the right is a scene which is not pleasant. The death god has become Quetzalcoatl's companion and a sacrificial knife is removing the heart of an Indian. But notice that the Mayan is depicted peacefully and his head glows as did the brain of the animal. Was this symbolically grabbed this was this symbolic growing the unfortunate origin of human sacrifice? But if it is only symbolic, what is the symbolism? Did what so called perhaps make some unfortunate comment such as give me your hearts or let us fly our hearts out? Some Aztec drawings do depict the sacrificial heart as actually flying out of the chest womb. In regard to this problem, refer to this plate, the traveler in the space-time machine appears to be dead god. He's holding a bag which contains a dark object. Mayan sculptures having this shape are considered by authorities to represent the sacrificial heart. Note to the left, the seated man, an animal again with glowing heads. Closely examination of the five scenes in these plates that the space-time adventure can not be simply told in terms of the Indian and Quetzalcoatl despite the author's desire to do so. The identification of at least nine different persons and their situations in each scene suggests either a more complex adventure or no continuous trip at all. The space-time machines were also used to transport objects as well as people examine this plate and here someone is loading up a machine with a pot a giant pet bee carrying three bases some sort of transporting device as we be seen and a bunch of bananas which were still in his hand note that the bananas do not have a dark border around them and shown in the other drawings this is to signify that the object itself is being represented and not the galaxy or nuclear from which it comes look at the babylonian looking hat the author believes this scene is taking place in a different moment in time possibly on another planet the lack of a border on the bananas could more precisely mean that the location is that object's origin. In like manner, one does not see a border around the spiral nuclear. It represents the Milky Way and is at home. The most striking demonstration that the presence of absence of that galactic barrier has meaning in this plate in the middle. The giant pet B be also seen on, on these two other plates. The transporting device may be identified in the middle of this one and elsewhere. 
You ask me, what of God? Examine this plate as shown by the footprints. God sometimes walks down his own self into various civilizations. The L-shaped figures which represent civilizations also appear in these plates on the top and in this other one. On his hand is a swan with which he creates man. First he places the swan on the pot, the upper center. The swan lays three identical eggs. The eggs turn into the mind and the pot into the face of a man. At the upper left is seen a comparison of God's and man's space-time travel. God relaxes and wills his mind to the galaxy he is viewing. The man, however, must use the space-time machine. In the middle of this plate, the power of God is emphasized. On the left he places himself outside of space-time as indicated by the wavy lines enclosed by the universal snake of awareness. On the right, God has decided to become the universal snake of awareness himself and travel through space-time as again indicated by the wavy lines. Note that seven galaxies along the body of the snake are identical. This indicates to the author that change is not occurring. The six different galaxies arranged vertically in the middle of the plate are seen to have the same external shape except for the black hole at the top which contains all shapes. The author ventures that a law of galactic evolution is being stated. Galaxy in the same stage of evolution is not necessarily the same galaxy in agreement with the O hypothesis. At the bottom left of this plate, God has decided to try out the space-time machine. In the bottom middle, he gazes at the nuclear galaxy at the same time as a seated man by his knee concentrating with his mind a black portion. At the bottom right, God enmeshes his whole body in space-time as again indicated by the wavy lines. All material objects may be imagined to be swimming in a sea of space-time as it would be appropriate to portray fish and boats as associated with the said wavy lines. Examine parts of this plate and wavy lines to signify space-time are also employed in these other two beginning plates. Of course, there are other ways that people think of God or the creation. Examine this other one on the top. The people of India believe that everything evolved out of the vomit of a jackal. And to illustrate this, space-time is shown flowing from the mouths of four jackals. The ancient Phoenician believed that a great bull gave birth to an egg called Mot. And from Mot, the sun and the moon arose. These are the actual beliefs held in ancient Phoenicia and India. Although the man with the elephant head, the present Mayan god of rain, has the appearance of a bull to the author, and the four animals have the appearance of jackals to the author, it obviously does not follow with my certainty that the legends are related to the drawing. This is shown in the center. Might not, however, man himself somehow produce his own imaginary creator god. The vomiting jackals, or even the nucleons out of which all is made, or even the nucleus out of which all is made. This concept is expressed in this plate. Perhaps it is more accurate to say that man-god is involved at the beginning and god-man is involved at the end. This concept is expressed in this plate. Note that both are supplying out of bowls the space-time fluid through which the snake of awareness must travel. Let us now imagine the imaginary world in more detail. In order to distinguish an imaginary nucleon from a real one, the imaginary one shall be shown with a square galactic barrier. Keep in mind that one is constantly turning into the other, that they coexist in space-time and that what is imaginary or real depends on the location of the observer. As a further aid to understanding the world of the imaginary, the imaginary figure shall be portrayed in a darker color than the real one. 
This is particularly striking in the original color manuscript. Examine this beginning plate again. The elephant god is imaginary, as shown by his dark color, and exists outside of space-time. Note that the pile of nucleons by his feet have round galactic barriers. Food? Now examine the beginning plate again. <laughs> 